Hi, I'm the Calculus Professor and today we'll be talking about areas between curves. In problem number 29, we'd like to express the area of this shaded region down here as integrals or possibly just one integral with respect to x and with respect to y. So I don't want to actually integrate these, I just want to set up integrals that would actually give me the area of this region if I computed that integral. So um, we could start with the easy way and that is that when I look at this thing I think okay if I'm trying to find the area between two curves what I really want to do is I want to say okay is there a top function and is there a bottom function and if I look at it this way with top and bottom then I can see that this one's kind of on the top and this one's kind of on the bottom, but not quite, because over here it changes. And this curve is on the top and this curve is on the bottom for a little while. And then it switches over and this curve is on the top and this curve is on the bottom. So if I'm integrating this thing with respect to x, then I need two integrals. If I'm integrating this thing with respect to y, then I'm asking is one of these things on the right the whole time and is one of these things on the left the whole time? And in that case, the answer is yes. This curve is always the curve on the right side and this curve is always the curve on the left side. So if I integrate this thing with respect to y, I only need one integral. So we can do this both ways. Uh, both ways are appropriate. One of them might be the superior way because we only have to do one integral instead of two, but we could do it both ways. So let's see how that would work. So if we we're going to do this thing with respect to y, then this is easy because this is the top function and this guy is the bottom function. So with respect to y, then all we need to do is we need to take the integral. Uh, and now I guess I need to know where does this thing start and where does this thing stop? So what I could do is I could set these two uh, functions equal to each other to figure that out. If I want to set them equal to each other, then I just say that y squared minus 3 is equal to 2y. Uh, so I could put the 2y on the other side and I get y squared minus 2y minus 3 equals 0 and if I factor this guy I get that y uh, let's see minus 3 y plus 1 equals 0 and that y would either be positive 3 or negative 1 uh, which seems to make some sense so this would be at positive 3 and this would be at negative 1. Okay, so now that we know that, we know that we're integrating from negative 1 up to 3, and we want the top function minus the bottom function, all of that in y. So the top function in this case is the line 2y minus the bottom function, which in this case is the parabola y squared minus 3, all of that dy. So this would be the integral that would get the job done if I was doing this with respect to y. Now what if I want to do the exact same problem but I want to do this thing with respect to x. Well, if we want to do this with respect to x, then first thing we need to do is we need to change these functions over to functions of x. So let's solve both of these for y. If I solve this one for y, I get x equals 2y, or that y is equal to x over 2. Uh, if I take this one, I get x is equal to y squared minus 3. I solve that for y, and I get that x plus 3 is y squared and that y is equal to the square root of x plus 3. Okay, so now that I've got that, 
Uh, by the way, ultimately this is plus or minus the square root of x plus 3, and that actually is a little bit important here. This is actually a plus or minus. And the positive square root is this top half of the parabola, and the negative square root is this bottom half. But I'm going to use a little bit of a trick here to get around that problem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, uh, I'm looking at the top function minus the bottom function. And this time, I'm really looking at the top, meaning the one up higher minus the one lower. So if we're starting from here, I'm looking at these things. And the top function is this function. The bottom function is this function until I get to some point right here. So what is this point? What are the points where these two curves cross each other? Well, I already kind of figured out what the values are. At least I figured out what the y values are. So what are the x values? If y is negative 1, then x would be negative 2. So we're talking about negative 2 right here. And this value out here. Uh, would be what? Well, that is where y is 0, so that's at negative 3. So uh, what we're doing here is we're integrating. So this is the value minus 3. This is the value x equals negative 2. So we're integrating from negative 3 to negative 2 of what? Well, this top function, which we said was the positive square root, minus the bottom function, which we said was the negative square root. Uh, <clears throat> but if I wanted to, I could just double the top, because this is a symmetric region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double just looking at the top, so just integrating this top function, which is the square root of x plus 3 dx. OK, so that's going to get me the area up through negative 2, so that much. But now I need to integrate from negative 2 all the way up to some other x value, which is right here. Well, if I plugged in 3 here uh, for y, I'd get that x is 6. So we want to integrate from negative 2 all the way up to 6 of the top function which is that positive square root, so square root of x plus 3, minus the bottom function, which in this case is x over 2. All of that dx. And so these two integrals together would also give me the area of this shaded region. So you can see that if we had to make a choice, we'd much rather use the respect to y version than the respect to x version, but both of them get the job done.